teacher want to populate uh, the entire population into different segments okay so now we will uh, look towards the supervised model and first we will check the classification model with the same example so here i'll uh, load the same data read table and say flower okay and run this section so we have the four feature of this flower and and the fifth we have the output with some uh, name okay so this uh, column output will be when we will be importing this model into a classification model so matlab will automatically uh, recognize that the last one is the classification model so how to import this one into matlab deep learning model okay. or machine learning model so we have to go to the home section and in the app category we'll go to the machine learning and deep learning model and there we will first take the classification learner toolbox okay so here uh, we'll click on the new session and say we want to import the data from the workspace or in the next option we can import the data from the excel file also but first we will see how we can do it from the workspace so i'll click on the first option and here it will open a dialog box in which the first parameter will be a data set variable okay so here i'll click on the drop down button and i have stored the data in a variable so let uh, first clear everything and let me so that no confusion will be there let me remove everything all the data from workspace clear clc yeah okay now i'll go and take the classification learner and this one yeah so now i'll run my script first in which i have loaded the data so i'll run this script okay now i'll go to the new section new session and here i will import the data by taking the first option which is from workspace so here because there was only one data which was a okay when i run the script because all other data i have already cleared it out so matlab directly imported that table and here you can see because the last column the column 5 is our character data type so it automatically took it into the uh, output or into the response so response and output convey the same meaning here and in the predictor as like attribute feature and now we have one more term predictor they all convey the same meaning okay so we have predictor as a column var1 var2 var3 and var4 which have the sepal length petal length and the ratio okay now and here it says that in the category or categorical data we have three unique categories okay now if you look at to the validation part then we have three options first one is the cross validation okay and in this cross validation uh, you will see by default it is set to five fold so what happens whatever is the size of your total data okay uh, four by fifth of that total data will be used for training and one by fifth will be used for validation to check the accuracy of the data okay and i can increase the fold also like say six fold or this one ten fold so in 10 fold like 
uh, one by tenth will be uh, taken out for the testing, and nine by ten will be used for training. Okay, we have other option which is called holdout. That sets the percentage out of the entire database. Say I keep twenty percent for the testing, rest eighty percent will be kept for training part. And the other one is no validation. So no validation, we option uh, that option we do not take. Why? Because in that case it can lead to overfitting problem. Okay, because all data when if it will be used for training, and uh, no uh, neuro, uh, no sample data is there for the testing, then there is high chances that it can overfit on the entire uh, samples. So generally, we use these two option in most of the cases. So see here, I take the first option for the experiment, that is cross validation, and start my session. Start. Okay, so here you can see the distribution of the entire data set, and this is if you look at towards the one minute. Yeah, if you look it towards the right column, then we have the predictor X and Y. In X, we have bar one, that is the feature one and in y we have the feature 2 uh, so the plot which you are seeing is the graphical or 2d representation of the data uh, where in x axis we have feature of uh, the vertical bar 1 and in y axis we have bar 2 similarly i can change this to 3 like the comparison and the plot with respect to feature 1 and feature 3 and the plot of with respect to feature 1 and feature 4 so this is what somewhat we have seen in the clustering like this way our two data has arranged there okay and here also we can change it and see the comparison okay so this is just the output display with respect to the uh, features because already we know the output so here each color represents the category so the blue color represents the iris setosa and we can see why in all cases when we were putting in clustering three into three also like nine categories why this iris setosa is only able to club together because it has a quite distinct uh, difference or a high difference from the other two uh, families right so whatever comparison i take here say with three also i can see there is a quite high separation so that's why all this data uh, throughout the two into two or three into three or three four five they all come together as a 50 population set so this was the reason so now on this data i want to fit a classification model and initially i don't know which classification model will will be the best in this case so in matlab there is an option uh, like if you click on the second part is the like different different kinds of classification model are there in this tree so if i expand this one so there i can manually also i can choose like if i want to take the uh, quadratic svm or linear svm so in this way like matlab will start the training and all i have to do is to just select one method and then click on the run button so generally, as I said, uh, all this training part will happen on the graphics card. So it will search like if in your system it has graphics card, then it will run this entire training model on the graphics card only. But if you don't find any graphics card, then that will happen on the CPU. OK, so if you have parallel CPUs, then there also it will import take all the parallel processor for the training part. So it will take uh, 30 second time to initiate the parallel pull once the parallel pull is initiated then the whole training part will happen within few seconds
sometime it can take minute also to open the parallel pool but just first time only it will take time rest throughout the session it won't take any time okay so parallel pool on local system has been uh, running for less than a minute and it will shut down if still idle in 30 minutes okay number of workers four fine so i think now as parallel pool has been started and soon it will give us the output also so yeah now we can see in the bottom corner the sign changes into green it means that parallel pool has been started and now we can see here the training is also starting so right now i have taken uh, svm method a linear svm method in order to see like what is the accuracy in terms of classifying the same problem which we have done in the clustering okay so it gives a efficiency of 96.7% accuracy and similarly i can compare with the other method also say naive bias so initially uh, like uh, based upon the feature uh it is hard to tell like which method will be best okay so in order to solve this problem we have a quick method in which we can select all the entire method and matlab will like you just have to select this all method and click on the train and then matlab will take all the method and it will check the accuracy of the training model and whichever gives the highest accuracy uh matlab will highlight that by putting the white color rectangular box over that method so if you pay attention towards the right column again then the cross symbol represents the incorrect prediction and the dot represents the correct predictions okay and the color it means that it is confused with the that family with the other family okay so here it gives that linear discriminant method is giving us the best result so we select this one method okay and after selecting say i want to see the uh, confusion matrix because right now whatever we are watching that is the scatter plot so i just click on the confusion matrix in order to see like so the accuracy is 98% and i think we have taken uh how many data for testing okay so it says that it able to confused one element that was like the true class is there on the y axis okay so the flower belong to a virginica family but it predicted it at as a versicolor family and there are two versicolor flower which it predicted with the virginica so this is the confusion plot of this and if i want to see the true positive rate then in finding out the rs satosa the machine has no problem at all like 100% there is efficiency and why it is so that also we have seen like because there is a quite distinct difference in the feature so that's why machine has no problem in recognizing arisutosa but yes in case of versicolor and uh, virginica the efficiency is somewhere 96 and 98% so that is the highest efficiency of this system so uh, next plot which we have is the receiver operating characteristics which Uh, the area the overall area has to be one in order for the highest efficiency so these are different different method in which we can check for the uh, performance of the machine learning model so generally most of the time uh, we use the confusion plot so once this is done then i can go for the export model so here there are two things 
uh, one is the export model and uh, first let's try this one export model and a generate function so what generate function does if you are having a generate function then it will create an entire function file in which whatever data you will pass that data will go for the training first as per the selection which we have made like we have taken the cross validation maybe i guess one by ten uh, for the training and then whatever result will come that will be stored into some uh, variables so first i'll show what export model does so in export model all this train model will be summarized into two variables so let me export it into the system as trained model without the space we have to write the variable name okay now i'll minimize this and open the workspace so here we can see we have a new variable named train model if i double click on this variable then i can see so many fields so one is the prediction field okay so here it says that in order to find out the output based upon the four data which is the feature i have to use a function named as uh, train model dot prediction fit and in t i have to pass the table information okay so i'll double click and check so here we just have the function and uh, if you go to the classification discriminant then one minute model parameters that we don't want to mess with mm, required variables so these are the required variables because in our model we have four uh, features so four variables information is stored in required variable and in classification discriminant if we go to the output model number of observation is 50 hyperparameter categorical predictions um, response name yeah so that name will be stored in response category why how to predict okay sorry uh, all those information are stored in the class name variables not in the response name rather in the class names so here we can see like whatever is the name of our classification model all those information have been stored in uh, class name uh, cell of the trained model so here we have the three classes which is going to be used for prediction okay so now we are going to use this thing like how we can use it say suppose um, i create a new vector say with different different values but that also i'll do in the command script only and i'll use this line in order to find out the output okay so in order to use this first i have to create a t table which contains the uh, observation so see here i create t is equal to four observation say 5.2 like i'm creating a dummy variable out of this observation and i will like to see like how close matlab is able to predict it okay so say the first is uh, 5.2 and uh, point eight and uh, two instead of one point four and then we have zero point five okay so this dummy data I'm creating uh, like for a species which is closely related to Aristotosa family okay so this one I'll first create into table by converting this t is equal to array to table 
okay and now let's run this section okay so it is throwing some error and why this error is coming because the name of the feature is different in the table a the name of the feature started with var1 var2 var3 var4 and but the name here started with t1 t2 t3 and t4 so for this what we can do uh, like we can go for the say read variable names and make this property false in both the cases okay so that matlab sorry control z control c so that matlab will going to convert in the default this thing in here can i give variable names okay or i should i can give my own variable names say whatever variable name we have used it there so i have to change this line because whatever variable name we have used in the parent file same variable name i have to use it here also so first variable name is var1 second variable name is var2 similarly third variable name it should be var3 and so does the fourth variable name i can do this way also or i can make a separate excel in which i can put my multiple testing samples and i can direct call that excel file so both way it will do so we will see both the methods after this and i'll run this section so now you can see it is giving you the output so in yfit variable we have the output and we can see it is closely related to sitosa family because in sitosa family only we have this uh, petal length uh, like in this fashion but now say i uh, take come here okay and here we can see the data is in this fashion where i have to make changes if i do changes in the third position and make it four then it won't be no longer remain to sitosa family rather it will become some other family so instead of 2 if i change it to 4 that ratio now the same model is giving me that it belongs to a iris versicolor family okay now as i said we can import the same information for testing in terms of uh, excel okay so because in excel we can easily put so many types of data which are coming from different different sources so i'm going to create a excel excel i think all algorithm uh, a question asked by participant or nature inspired algorithm also given in toolbox same as svm and all uh, actually all algorithm are nature inspired only so if you can elaborate then i can better explain what is your question like echo abc abc is the name of algorithm oh uh, hello sir yes ma'am uh, sir ac is ant colony optimization and artificial bee colony algorithm these are nature inspired algorithms no are okay, there also okay 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 uh 
uh, the B algorithm, I think that is optimization algorithm, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, that is, I think, uh, not in the toolbox, correct? So that uh, we have to code it as what we did uh, in the TL view. Same way we have to code uh, because that is not, I think, in the toolbox. Some algorithm are oh. there, but not the B and the swarm optimization like that. It is not there. Okay, sir. The Excel is taking time because I have integrated Excel with MATLAB. So it is loading the MATLAB feature also inside Excel. Sir, That's sir, one question time. I want to put up. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Ask me. Uh, sir, just one question right, right, uh, right from the beginning. I am thinking you are using two editors. One is on the left, one is on the right. So left one is MATLAB versus what is the right one? Okay, okay, uh, sir. Actually, what I did now, I just take out the live editor outside from the MATLAB interface window. So right side is the live editor, and uh, left side is the terminal, M MATLAB terminal. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, All right. Because okay. it gives me more space to write the code and see the output. So that's why I generally take out uh, the mm -hmm. section because inside if I command terminal, if I open it, then it will give me only smaller area to write the code and see the output also. Mm -hmm. So that's why mm -hmm. I have undocked it. So you can click on oh. the triangular notch area and there it will give you option ah. to undock. So if you will undock ah. it, then it will show separately on a separate screen. This is just like a pro programming editor, just, just the programming correct, editor, correct. right? Exactly, exactly, sir. It is a kind of a programming editor only. Okay. Okay, so now here we have Excel file and in this we are going to create our sample uh, data. Say 4.5, one minute. 4.5, 5.2, 5 3, and 0.8. 3 1.8, 1.8, 0.2, 5.8, 4.6, 3.2, and 1. So, say suppose just random uh, few data I've created. I'll save this into the same folder and name it as a test sample. And I'll call this Excel via command. So say test sample and save it. Okay, so now instead of uh, using this line where I have created this one, I will use uh, read table command in order to store the information into this one. So read table. And give the name of the file, say test sample.xls. Okay. And I'll run it. Okay. Actually, fourth line is not required because already the data is in table. So we have to delete this line. So I'll put it into comment because we don't require. So now we can see. All the data it is given, and I will search why it is doing so because maybe the first feature is dominant. Let me make it full screen. Yeah. Okay, so I have to increase the third value in order to get a different uh, family. So I'll go to my Excel and this one data. Control Z. Okay, so this one I'll increase to different different number. 5.8, 2.8, 3.2, 4.6, 3.2. What output we are getting run section so now we can see like where we have changed it to a different number 
a different uh, family it is showing so total i have eight data or eight observation sample in my excel sheet so eight output it is giving so this way i can use the trained model but before using the trained model make sure next time if you are using it you have to first save it okay so so how we can save the trained model like once you export the train model onto uh, matlab workspace you just have to use the save word and write the name of that model trained model so this will save this train model into your current working directory like here i have animal net.mat file saved so similarly it will save the trained model.mat file okay now let me show you where it is trained if i go with capital letter uh, letter sensitive so it should come somewhere trained model yeah here it is so say if i clear all the variables say clear all okay now everything will be deleted from the workspace we'll wait till it clears all the variable and the trained model from the workspace Actually, I think two MATLAB is on because I opened Excel, so it parallelly it opens one more MATLAB. Okay, now it will speed up a little bit. Okay, we have to wait it i don't know why always in second half i see this thing it becomes un, unusually little bit slow compared to what speed i get in the first half it is still busy only just a simple command is there clear all but still it is busy okay now it is clear yeah okay so now as everything is clear now if i run my um, this thing live script it will throw an error again and first let me show you the error and then i'll explain why that error is coming so first it reads the table and now it says that the error is unable to solve the name train model dot prediction file so why this problem is coming because now matlab don't know what is this train model is okay and if it don't know the train model it cannot use the other property which is predict function okay so in order to solve this issue because i have saved the train model into a mat file i will load that mat file first so i can easily do it with a load command load and the name of the uh, model which is train model so it will load it from uh, first it will look into the, my current working directory and if it found there train model dot mat file then it will load it and now if i run it uh, you won't see any uh, problem it will show you the output okay so train model dot mat file you can treat it like a brain okay that you have saved it and later on you can use it with a load command
any problem up to here? Okay. So now I'll look at uh, the different aspect, which is the uh, function creation. If I'm dealing with the uh, same uh, type of data set in which always I have a four column, but yeah, uh, the row information can change. Like sometime I can get only 20 data, sometime I can get 100 data or 200, and it changes with the different different uh, uh, experiment or observation. Okay, so in this in those case, it's better that we convert the entire model into a function so that before prediction. I can uh, train it as per the current uh, updated data set. Okay, so we'll look how we can do it. So instead of export model, I'll create, uh, click on the generate function. So in generate function, here as what we have did with image segmenter or curve fitting toolbox, same way we have to give it a name here. So I give it a name as train classifier model so that I can remember that this function is used for training purpose. So in train classifier model, uh, it will take the training data, which is which should be, I think in our case is a table data uh, type, and it will give you two output. One is the validation accuracy, and other one is the name of the classifier, which in our case, we have used a uh, train model, okay. So this time it is trained classifier. And all those parameters which we have selected like uh, cross validation, it is already there inside this uh, entire function. Let me show you like here, we have the K fold cross validation taking 10. So it means nine by 10 will be used for the training purpose and one by 10 will be used for validation part, okay. So it will create a entire function for you. And now by using this one, we will see how we can train it or use the function. So first I have to save it with the control save and I'll save this as a train classifier model. And now I'm going to use these two lines. Control C. Minimize it. Sorry. There only I have. And I'm going to use it here. So I don't require any load. Okay. So here we have the complete command for training. So it will uh, train on the SVM, like linear SVM, and stores the output in a trained classifier name. So in order to predict, I have to use this name instead of train model, control V. So these two information I have to update. And now if I run, then, okay. Unrecognized function or variable trained data. Okay, sorry. So this I have to update it. So trained data is equal to A. So here, whatever is there, that will behave as a trained data. And now I'll run it. Okay, so now here I can see the entire description. The validation accuracy is 98% and the fitting, uh, like whatever result I was getting previously, same I'm getting here also. And this time I have the function. So next time, if I have to pass a different Excel, I just have to change the name of the Excel and it will do the automatic uh, training model over that. And because I have automated the testing part also, so it will give me the prediction also based upon it. Now we will take one more example in which we have a data set uh, in terms of zero and one, like the output data set is in number zero and one not in a categorical fashion and there i think we have eight observation depending upon the patient data so this one i'll put into section breaker and here is two
data is equal to read table p i double d so this is the medical data if i run this section we can see uh, total we have nine columns and here uh, from one to eight, the, uh, these column information are related to the feature, related to blood pressure, cholesterol level like that. And in the ninth column, we have uh, the output, like whether that patient is affected by cancer. If it is affected by cancer, then the answer will be yes, one, or if not, the answer will be zero. So if this model I want to import in a classifier, I'll close this one model first, uh, close app. Okay. And we can load the classifier using the command as classifier uh, learner also. Classification. Classification learner. Mm, classification layer, it is not layer we want with learner we want. anyways. Uh, we will take it from the toolbox. So deep learning, classification learner. Yeah. So if you look at to the workspace, then we have A, uh, then data and then T as a table. So now here in MATLAB, we have to specify on which uh, data set we want to get the training. So here you will see like MATLAB not able to take the data automatically because there are already lot many data in the workspace. So here we have to manually give it and this time we will take data table and here whatever is uh, there in the last column, like if the data is not categorical, in that case also what MATLAB does it will uh, take by default the last column as the output. Okay, so in last column, we have kept the output in terms of zero and one. So that is what we are seeing. So here it is saying that the output is in double format and the value is in the range of zero and one. And here it gives uh, some warning message also like response variable is numeric, distinct value will be in interpreted as a class label. So just saying that in your case, the data type, instead of some string, it is a numeric nature. So if you are making some mistake, then you can recognize, but here it is not a mistake. Rather, we only have kept that one. And this time, say, suppose I go for a fold instead of a K fold. So, and this time I put, because I have total 768 observation. So I'm taking 20% for the validation part. Okay, so 80% will be uh, used for the training model and 20% will be used for testing. And whichever comes up with the highest efficiency, MATLAB will going to show that. So after this, we will click on the start. And here it loaded the data. So again, with respect to predictor, like on the right side, we can see uh, the graphical behavior with respect to other variables, like how it looks like. So this is the scatter plot of the entire data set with respect to variable two. Okay. And now say, in this case, again, we don't know like which model will be best. Okay. So I'll select all and click on the train. And MATLAB will check for all, and again it is starting the parallel pool because I think it is more than 30 minutes. So by default, if you are not using parallel pool for 30 minutes, then it will be closed automatically. So again, MATLAB will open the parallel pool and we'll do the process. Mm 
because in this case we only have two options only either zero or one so we are seeing only two colors that is orange or blue okay yeah now the parallel pool has started sir which classification model we are using svm no no we are using all the classification model like svm knn decision tree uh, and rest okay. other also like all and we are seeing the comparison because oh. there is no such rule which can tell like which model will be best so in matlab there is a feature like you just have to select all and it will train on all the model present in matlab and will give you the result okay sir where we have where we have specified that we are taking all models can you again tell me yeah yeah sure sir uh, in the toolbox uh, category like after loading the file you just have to click uh, on the triangular notch and here in getting started like get started tab you have a all function okay so if you select this all then all uh, model will be test for that uh, classification model and whichever gives the best result that will be shown by matlab with a highlighted okay. rmsc or accuracy so because we are doing classification problem so it is giving the result in in terms of accuracy but when we'll be doing the regression problem there it okay. will give the uh, output in terms of root mean square RMSE. error correct yes sir rmsc and correlation correct correct sir okay so okay. here in this case we can see the best uh, performance we are getting from svm quadratic svm so quadratic svm is giving us the best performance and say mm -hmm. i select this one and check the confusion plot because actually we have less number of data for the uh, infected patient than compared to the normal patient so here we can see the confusion plot so there are 11 cases in which the normal patient was detected as a patient having cancer and there are 26 cases in which the cancer patient was predicted as a normal patient okay so if i get a true positive uh, type then i can see for detecting the normal patient the machine overall efficiency is 89 but for the cancer patient it is 50 50 approx and the reason is this because maybe the feature is not adequate okay and we have to provide either more sample or we have to give more uh, features for it to learn from it sir will it automatically do pca uh, no no you have to check it like for pca you just click on pca and enable this thing because by default in matlab pca is turned off so if you check the pca and then again you click on the train model then matlab will uh, account mm -hmm. for pc also and run on the entire model once again so right now i have select svm including pca so right now you can see in the last row it is uh, training the model and the result is yet to come okay so in case of pca we are getting 66 percent efficiency so i guess uh, svm is far better because we can see that in terms of like detecting the cancer patient it is hardly 11 percent only correct so it is of no use using the pca method so we will go for the svm only okay And similarly what we did like we can create either it into a train model or we can create a entire function for it so i'll export this also into matlab and say i give it a name as cancer model so whenever i'm exporting it to workspace i have to make it sure that first i save this else i have to do the training when 
I want to use it for the prediction because that mat file will be lost. So here we have the model, cancer model. So before using it, I'll recommend better use save word and use the and save the cancer model. And now we can see in our workspace. Yeah, here we have the cancer model saved. So if I want to load the cancer model, just have to write load cancer model. And it will be loaded like clear. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, you are audible to me. Okay, sir. Yeah. So now, uh, once we loaded the cancer model, then we will repeat the same process in order to test. Uh, that is, the MATLAB itself is giving like how we can use this function. So we have to use this in order to predict. Control C. And we can use here in the command script. So I'll expand this one to full screen. Okay. But in order to predict, I have to give it a value. Okay. So that value, again, say I use the same Excel table. And here I have to manipulate. So what I will do, I take first column data and then I'll try to manipulate it and check what result it gives. So the code is not fully visible Can you. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, uh, now it is visible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'll take a five minute break and after that I'll create one dummy data and we will test the output of the cancer model also. I'll put the code also in chat box for that. Other participant can directly use it. Actually, I have to give you the file also in order to use it because uh, these are inbuilt uh, functions which MATLAB has created. So that too, I have to give it in order to use it. But anyways, at least with the command, you can get some idea.
Okay, so now we'll continue. <clears throat> okay, so any doubt uh, up to here? Okay, so in order to test this model, I have to create a table. Uh, sir, I posted a question on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, you have posted. Okay, let me check. Okay, I posted about PC. So PCA is used for dimensionality reduction in general. After applying PCA, then one of the classifier is used. Okay, yes, one of the classifier we have used. Please comment on elaborate. Okay. 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 Uh, I'll take a new session. Wait. Okay. Um, data is seven sixty eight. And yes, twenty percent. Keeping all the constraint at same. Okay. I'll start the session. So. Um, First, I will enable the PCA because already we have did one analysis without PCA. Uh, as uh, we all know that PCA is generally used for dimensionality reduction. So here we have a lot of dimension, say uh, eight dimensions are there. And after dimensional reduction, uh, we have to check with the different algorithms. Say, most of the time for immediate recognition, say people use uh, K-nearest method like Euclidean distance, but here uh, we want to know like which method will be best. So we are making it to test. Okay, so here, say I take all the method and in this all method, I have turned on the PC also. And let's see like whether uh, there is any improvement using dimensionality reduction. See, any dimensionality reduction uh, will have some information uh, loss also. Okay, because uh, we want to minimize the memory in terms of like from eight dimension to two dimension if I'm uh, bringing, then definitely it has some loss of uh, information also. So that we can easily check it here. Like with respect to which PCA model we are getting what. So. Because here, whatever data we are dealing with, the size of data is not that too big, which can like lead to uh, higher computational time. So it is just some few datas, like in order of thousand and that number. So for MATLAB, it is nothing. But for images, yes, we do require because the data can go up to lakhs also for per, say, suppose I've, if I'm taking one image of thousand by thousand size. So in this case, uh, just for one picture, I have total data that is uh, one lakh values, right? Not one lakh, it is 10 to the power six. So it is 10 lakh values. So there I do require, but here we can see that the best PCA based, uh, this thing is the output is only 67%. So that is not uh, up to the mark, which like without PCA, like taking all the feature, we got the efficiency. So PCB generally be used where we have the size of the data, which is very huge. Okay. But in this case, in the Excel uh, sheet, which we are taking here, we don't require because the size is, um, is compatible or it, it can be handled very easily. This is not used as a classifier directly. No, no PC. We don't use as a classifier directly. 
rather what happened okay i'll explain this problem i'll go to paint and from just a layman understanding i'll provide it here um one paint okay so first we will understand uh, after all what this pc is all about so see suppose i have uh, images of three persons okay einstein uh, ram and sham okay and for each person i have four four images okay so total here uh if i see then i have only uh, this thing uh three categories only right one category name is einstein other category name is ram and the third category name is sham but the individual picture of einstein okay and ram will be like say in the order of i'm taking 1000 by 1000 okay that too is a like the smaller size only if we are done like dealing with the image but in terms of matrices if i vectorize this information then i know that all the row and the column i have to uh, make it a vector so either in one row or column vector i have to transform it so the size will become 1 cross 10 to the power 6 that is 10 lakh okay now to deal with this 10 lakh will be too much difficult right uh, data so in order to solve this problem what we take uh, like we have here 4 4 and 4 so total 12 number of observation point we have so we reduce all this uh, data which are arranged into columns say 1 into 10 lakh column and we reduce it to it into a 4 a 12 number of column only by taking the transpose and then multiplying with the, the uh, this thing the covariance vector or the eigen value okay uh so there we get a reduced in terms of 10 lakh now i have only uh, 12 uh, diagonal elements which can give the better uh, same extent so basically what happens if any data control a uh, one minute if any data is arranged in xy okay so pc basically what does it try to find out a fitter line uh, which can have a very close uh, this thing uh, where it can just superimpose all the feature so if i take one um, minute control z z z z okay so this imagine that this is the pc line okay i'm going to i'll take the line only yeah so this is one pc line okay so here uh, we know that the pc main objective is to and this is the other one okay and this both line will uh, touch the origin only so if i get the superimposition of all this data onto this line then what will happen this uh, i'll take a pen only so here uh, the projection of this will come here the projection of this will come here okay this will come here and so does so this line uh, do not describe the spatial distribution as accurately as what this line can because on this line i have a uh, like if i just rotate this line okay so one minute okay so on this line like if i'm um, just plotting this line over here so the distribution of this line will be like this and here the same uh, observation point are having more information because they are uh, separated to each other and as we have seen in the irosetosa case like if they are separated to each other then more easily i can uh, differentiate rather any close lump where it can be very difficult so here the two dimension problem will be reduced to a single dimension like i'll just consider only this as a principal uh, component reduction axis and based upon it i'm going to Uh, describe okay so there can be only uh, two ways in which i can differentiate the rest three particle 
okay and uh, these two particles okay yeah the axis rotation we do uh, like once we reduce into some uh, more dominant uh, principal axis then we do the axis rotation also yes or it is just a basically a superimposition of all those points onto that particular angled axis and put, we put it into a vector so if you are not having the problem uh, that is like related to data set which is not that huge then instead of pca because in pca also you are just removing some information okay so without pca you will get a better result but generally in case of images we go for pca based reduction but it is not required in this case the excel cases where we just have only few thousands of data okay sir one question yes sir uh, sir uh, we can use uh, pca during uh, prediction uh, time only if we have done pca during the trading time right Uh, because the, the coefficients of the eigen vectors are to be calculated on the training data right correct not on the test data correct no okay, see, so first oh, uh, if, if we okay, cannot yeah. Mm, yeah continue continue uh, so we cannot do that if if we do the training on the mm -hmm. actual data and not on the pca data then we cannot mm -hmm. use the pca data to for uh, prediction purpose right mm, sir again repeat because the question is done on the actual uh, actual uh, sir my no, question sir, is suppose have we have uh, 10 yeah. attribute okay 10 attribute fine uh, suppose we have 10 attribute right okay right and uh, we have trained the model on those 10 attributes right correct uh, then if uh, if now i apply my model on the test cases okay then i must uh, use only those 10 attributes for the testing also right correct right if, if we have not trained the model on the uh, reduced dimension using pca then we cannot use pca during classification right now correct right right okay. that's what i'm so, asking we, we can yes, sir, yes, sir. yeah sir uh, the thing which okay. you said is absolutely right and generally what happened when uh, we are doing the training part and that's why matlab asks you like whether you want pca or not okay because the moment you click on pca then matlab create a function in which mm -hmm. it will first do the dimensionality reduction okay and after that it will mm -hmm. uh, select uh, all these different different method and check for the accuracy okay so uh, let me generate one function and i can show you there uh, the moment you create a function in that function also what will happen the moment you pass any test data with that many feature it will be superimposed as per the pc algorithm and then only it will be checked okay so matlab take care of that part uh, okay, are you okay, able okay. to get it or should i show you with a real example like say i have example no, it's also. okay i got your point i got your point thanks yes sir okay sir so say we select the svm and um, one minute generate function okay so see here we have a pcm transformation function so whatever data we have provided as a kind of a uh, observation data those observation data will first go for a pca transformation and after that only they will be go for a classification based upon svm okay because svm is giving us the best result in this case so first transformation will happen and then only training will happen on classification model If you use PCs must be during both the training and testing. Yeah, yeah. It uh, like once you select PCA, it will be used both in training, testing, validation, all time. But because if I, the moment if I convert this function, 
into a kind of a like reusable function then i just whatever data i'm passing that data has to go from all these steps where first it will be converted into a pcm uh, converter function and after that only it will be trained and based upon the training output the model uh, which we get that model uh, will use uh, the same way in order to uh, classify the sample so dimensional reduction will happen in first and then only the prediction will happen okay sir uh, yes sir sir on applying the pca whether that accuracy will increase uh, how to ensure that sir if you have less amount of data say in our case of cancer patient then obviously accuracy will decrease and the reason of decrease is very obvious because in pca we know that there is some data distortion and that data distortion is in negative sense not in a positive sense right because whatever you have a spatial distribution if you consider two axes uh, the two axis information is transformed into a single axis so in two axis you can have a more clear visible separation of data in respect to a single axis right so in case of less data when you have a data in excel sheet okay so obviously because of this distortion in data it can affect the accuracy in negative sense A small addition with your permission, sir. PC converts correlated feature into uncorrelated feature once. Correct, sir. Agree. Uh, like PC is able to um, like it short based upon the highest dominating feature. Um, like if you look uh, at its the diagonal element. then the most predominant feature will be like near to the uh, diagonals the top diagonals and the least significant will go can pca be used to extract feature from the data set yeah we use pca to extract feature from the data set say i'll show one example then it will be more better because generally pca we use in case of image where we have lot of data so i'll take one example a pca based example it base 2 so we have a, a pc yes, based it will, it will, it will be better system. if you show uh, correct sir i'll take one example only so that it will be a lot easier ah, yes, yes, for yes, everyone yes. to understand so ah, here do, we have yeah, a pc do, do based PC correct face recognition system okay and what approach we are taking i'll explain everything first this example hmm. an it program is to pc based okay so basically what we have did using the image processing technique and face cropper method we have created a training database and in training database you can see all the cropped faces are there i think everyone can see it clearly okay so if you look at to the this picture then for individual person we have taken only 3 3 photos of that particular person okay and these uh, photos uh, have slight variation like it can be some uh, looking in front or slightly left or in different posture okay so using this we want to make a pca based model because the image size is 100 by 100 again it will be like 10000 data so instead we want to make it even more faster so we reduce it into some smaller uh, number of principal component that is only 57 dimension we are creating out of 10000 dimensions okay because the size is 100 by 100 so it is 10000 dimension from 10000 dimension i am reducing it to only 57 okay so how we are doing it let's i'll show you example so main part open okay so here uh, i have given first the training database path 
which is my already in which folder i have uh, kept the cropped images okay so this is that path and i have used one function called create database i'll open it and show it what is written inside this so in create database basically i'm vectorizing all my photos because my photo is in two dimension right so in order to uh, do the analysis i first want to vectorize it so the algorithm which we have already discussed like how we can vectorize it i have used the same algorithm and the output is there in the t variable so after that once i get the vector information now i'm using a eigen face score function which is just converting all this vector information into a eigen face okay and let me show you this function first okay so in eigen core t uh, the t is the all uh, matrix information and why it is matrix information because what happened uh, control a suppose i have three photos so basically what happened as i know that i have vectorized it all the photo in a column vector for example so because i have three photo so all the vector will be kept one after the another so it becomes 10000 into 3 in this case if i have three photo but in my database i have 57 photo so it is 10000 cross 57 correct so that way it is a matrix information so t is having uh, like the number of column there represents the number of photos and each row represents the pixel value of the photo so in order to get the eigen face okay the algorithm goes like this like first we have to calculate the mean so mean photo how it look like let me show you face to face repository okay yeah so in order to get the mean face it is very simple operation i just have to use uh, like sum up all the entire uh, column information and take the average of it so here uh, left side image is the mean face of all the uh, samples okay where sample uh, is this one L like this is my all sample if i add all these faces and take the mean the mean will look like the left side okay the image which we are saying so we have a eye portion nose portion and lips portion and the hair which we can see like in the left and right side of the forehead so that a uh, blurry kind of image which you are saying that is the mean face okay now if we go back to our algorithm now after this i have to uh, calculate the or uh, you can say from this mean face i have to subtract each samples image in order to get a, a, a difference image matrix okay so ai the matrix a here represents the uh, or you can say that it's a kind of a residual plot in terms of image okay so i'm creating a residual matrix after subtracting it from the mean matrix and how that residual will look like so here if i subtracted the first image with the mean image i got the right side image which is more blackish and only those feature are highlighted which are unique okay and rest all the common feature uh, is turned into black so the lip part the nose part and the hair part you can see in this picture is turned into black and whatever gray scale you are seeing so that is the common or distinct feature of this image okay so i will collect all the distinct um, image matrix also into the row so i have enhanced my row because now this time as compared to the t it only contained uh, sorry it only contain distinct feature rather than the normal feature so it is same as like uh, how we calculate uh, sometimes the z score or uh, by subtracting the mean from that data and only the residual plot which we sometimes get so it is like similar to that only and after that in order to calculate the eigen vector to so we multiplied that uh, matrix after subtracting from the mean image 
take it transpose and multiply to take the cross multiplication in first uh, the a transpose is there and then it is multiplied with the a so in order to get the reduced uh, dimension because uh, the number of columns is 57 so it will create a 57 by 57 so if i run this one model let me first run it before running it let me clear all these things clear say okay okay so i'll go to mean and run this function okay so this is the mean face which it looks like and now i'll come to my workspace and here you can see in t uh, the dimension of t is 10000 rows into 57 number of column and all the data it contain is only 8 bit data okay and uh, in a we have the subtracted value so let me show you the value also okay so this is the value of t uh, okay and the same if i check the value of a then you can see it is in negative because it is subtracted from the average so it can go up to like negative to positive number uh, real number okay instead of the integer number as compared in the t okay and this is the mean matrix which is the mean of all the row taken sir finally we are going to calculate the covariance matrix right correct correct we are calculating the covariance matrix here uh, let me show you it will be of 10000 cross 10000 dimension if i multiply with a multiply by a transpose then it will be i guess 10000 by 10000 but here uh, we have multiplied with because covariance uh, because we have yeah, because we have 10000 features so the covariance matrix correct. Will obviously be of ten thousand cross ten thousand, right? Uh, one minute. No, uh, actually, we are multiplying not in that way. We are multiplying the transpose first, and then with the original uh, different matrix A. If you multiply with A into A transpose, then you will get ten thousand cross ten thousand. But here we are not doing that way. But uh, I we, but uh, for PCA we take the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix, right? Right, sir. Right, sir. Okay. But that is what we are reducing it here, like uh, because uh, due to that dimension only we are taking out the covariance using the formula like this one. Uh, instead of a into a, like the actual formula for covariance is this one. A into A transpose, mm. but we are multiplying with A transpose mm. into A in order to reduce that dimension part. Mm. Okay, so that's why if we look at the V vector, I think the output of this is stored in terms of M, A, and Eigen faces. Okay, so Eigen faces again will have that many number of rows. So Eigen face is a different thing but in order to show you this one i have to run it into a script then only we will be able to see like how the value of l is different it is not uh, 10000 by 10000 Okay, I'll just remove this line so that I can show it on screen how much it is taking. Okay, here we have the dimension of L. And here you can see we have the dimension of L 
that is not of 10,000, rather it is 57 column by 57 column. Can you see, sir? Like I have removed the this one sign, uh, the suppression sign, the semicolon sign, and now you can see, like we have total column that is 57. So L is having 57 by 57 instead of 10,000 by 10,000. So these are the, uh, th th this is after dimension reduction, right? Correct, correct. After dimension reduction. After we have reduced the dimension, right? Correct, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now after reducing the dimension, uh, what I have to do for each sample, I have to create the own Eisen phase uh, vector, okay? So that one we can create using uh, this uh, vector diagonal, this formula, like this algorithm, we can use it. And this one is shown here in the workspace. So Eisen faces contains 10,000 cross 53. And these are the Eisen faces. So now whenever I'll pass a new sample, so as per this algorithm, its Eisen face will be calculated and now in order to recognize, we are just calculating with the Euclidean distance. So I'll run that part. Yeah, this one is under recognitions function. So here you can see it is asking four parameter. One is the mean phase. The second one is the difference matrix. And the fourth one is the Eisen phase. And the first argument is the test image, which any new image you can pass into this PCA based image recognition system. And here, uh, like, just this algorithm is used only to calculate the Eigen phase of new test image. Once that Eigen phase matrix is calculated, and here we are just calculating the uh, Euclidean distance. That is like what is the difference between the each Eigen phases. So whichever matrix, or sorry, whichever column gives the least difference, that we will treat it as that it belongs to that image. Okay. So say suppose the test image have a very least difference with the sixth column. Okay, like sixth column data. So we will say it belong to a sixth column uh, image. So whatever address we have saved, so that uh, we will put it into code and display that it has recognized that image with the concern person. So I'll show one, this one also, like where we have written that algorithm. It is in GUI, so it will take 30 second time to open. Okay, so inside this function, I'll go to the code view directly in order to show. Okay, so once like here are the if cases, like once it predict that one part, so based upon the column information, uh, we are predicting, okay, this belongs to which person, uh, what is his age and what is the gender of that person. Okay, so these if files are related to uh, that only like whichever column it matches as per it we give the output with name and a sample image from the database and with other details correct sir. yeah 57 plus 57 okay so i hope uh, related to pca the doubt is clear Okay, now we will see um, some regression model or neural fittings. So first we will check the neural fit and then we will check the regression model. Okay. 
so yeah uh, here also we we have to test for some samples so see i take one sample data and just i'll manipulate some come on okay control c i'll open my excel and here only i'll change that value control z run section control minus run section okay i think to load it first load cancer model and run the section doesn't matter uh, we'll go to workspace and okay. so the data is in um, data variable name so this one i'll take up to this i'll copy and put it in excel okay and here i'll change like some of the values say 80 50 25 70 point zero six six eight just let's take this two only control s and call it inside my this one table so to see we have used the same table Okay, now run the section and here it gives that both the sample belongs to a normal patient only, not to a cancer patient. Anyway, now we will check for the neural fitting and then we will look at the regression model. 